Well, greetings, everyone. You are live with Joan of Angels, and we're going to step into the miraculous today. Are you a hybrid? Are you a star seed? Do you even know what you are? And are you excited to find out everything there is to know about being a walk in and a star seed? You will later on, but stay tuned. We will be right back after a chat with our sponsors. just came in the mail from hemp works okay um look the sh- i want you to know that the shampoo and conditioner is fantastic if you're not and using it you should some. use it yes and then i'll tell you what else came today um my fruit gummies the cbd fruit gummies when you take them each one is like 25 milligrams they are fantastic for you and your body i take them a couple of times a day they help with anxiety do you take them no, uh, I do. I tend to forget that I have the gummies, I, but I take my CBD and other. Oh, you do, right? Yeah. Right? You do. You I take have, it. I have some, some CBD um, pills. Not pills. Oh, you have the capsules. I have the I, capsules, yeah. Yes, I love the capsules. I also like the relief. This is a cream that we use to put on pain. So it's a topical cream cooling. And so I use this all the time. I do too. So yeah. I'm so happy it came. And then I have the tinctures. And some people love using the tinctures, 500. 750 and 1500 so you can get more concentrated doses if you need higher amounts of cbd yeah i have it in like six different flavors which i'm sending this up to my son i love this stuff it smells amazing and it's very luxurious that i guess that's the word i'd use it's really luxurious it's a top quality product with hemp good for your skin and enriches it okay yeah so we love hemp works It is true. I love HempWorks. They are our sponsors, so please check them out. Anyway, I'm so happy to see you all today. We have a fantastic show lined up. When I introduce our guest, it's going to be actually a a step into the miraculous, really, because we start to understand the greater picture and where we are in the world outside of our planet in the galaxy. So I want to welcome all of you who are who've been here before and who are new to the channel. If you're new to the channel, please like, subscribe, and share so we can grow our channel. And I'm really excited to say that we've grown over 100 subscribers this month because you guys have been sharing us out and loving on us and helping us build our tribe. And so that makes me very happy. And meanwhile, I am Joan of Angels, and I am a guide, your guide, to stepping into the miraculous and connecting with inspirational people and stepping into your purpose and mission this life. That's like my mission and I'm just, that's what I love to do. So I want to encourage you to go and check out my website, joanofangels.com. You can pick up the 30 days to a miraculous life, which I think some of you would definitely enjoy. And also check out the Soul Awakening Sessions, which will help you remember who you are, why you're here, your big picture, your mission, so that you can do what you did, you came here to do and have the happiness that you really deserve. And I love all of you. I'm just so grateful for you to be here. So now I want to tell you about our guest. She actually is very special. Besides being otherworldly, she has a very unique way of being. And she is a soul exchange walk-in. She'll explain that to us, but she entered the body of a 38-year-old mother who had three children and was immediately healed from all documented illnesses. 
apparently she had quite a history of symptoms and this changed her life that day. She actually was given the name of Nawali in the angelic realms by her star family. And she's discovered, which I find very fascinating, that her soul is a combination of angelic, Pleiadian, Syrian, Arcturian, Lyrian, Mantis, and Andromedan multidimensional beings. So her mission is to be a way shower for humanity to help us spiritually awaken and evolve. And I also want to let you know, she's also a regression therapist and she does a lot of work as a multidimensional life coach, healer, and a past life regressionist, always, always bridging this realm of consciousness. So I want to introduce you all to Sheila, Sheila Seppi. I'm so excited to bring you on, Sheila. Hi. Hi there. I am excited to meet you. Can you hear us? Yes. Yes. Can you hear me okay? I can. You seem to freeze for one second, but I, I think that was the dimensions. I think that was you entering into the new dimension of the miraculous with us. It and very so, well could be. <laughs> very well could be. So, Sheila, when did you ever, how did you know all this? When did you find out you were a walk-in? Like, how did that happen for you? Well, I was a walk-in for six months before I even had a clue as to what was going on because previously I had been a very sick person. I had been diagnosed with bone cancer, brain tumors, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue. I walked with a cane. I had erythema nodosum, sarcoidosis, and I felt like that my life was just in a real downward spiral. Wow. And I was a mom of three kids. And so, you know, even though you don't feel well, you just push through things. Okay. And so I just did what I had to do to make it through the day. And I went to bed a very sick person one night and what seemed to be like seven o'clock the next morning, it felt as if someone reached down, grabbed me by the hair of the head and pulled me bolt upright in my bed. It was like lightning ran through my body and I was in white space. Now, I don't know how long I was in that white space, but I know I was out of pain. I felt very comfortable. I had no fear. And then my peripheral vision started coming in and then my frontal vision. And as I got up, as I started moving around, it was as if I was looking out of someone else's eyes, especially when I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror. And so I didn't know it at the time, but I was instantaneously healed of all the ailments. And when I went back for my next checkup, they couldn't find anything, absolutely nothing. And they could not figure out what was going on. They had no explanation. And every time I would try to talk to them, the oncologist, anybody, they just like, well, we don't know. We have no idea what happened. But it's wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> you know, so, well, yeah, duh. Hello. Of, course. <laughs> of course. Yeah, of course it's wonderful. And so within those first three months, all of a sudden I had clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, and I had no foundational knowledge of what those were because at that time I was in a very small box and I had never read a metaphysical book. I did not believe in past lives. I had no knowledge whatsoever. And so all of these things happening led me to believe that I was having a psychotic break because my background was psychology. And so the next thing that happened was I could no longer remain in that marriage. And so I left. Then within the next three months, I accepted a new position in another state. And as I went to that state to try to check out the schools and housing and those kinds of things, I picked up a telephone directory and that's kind of dating me, but hey, you know, so I picked, okay, up, right, okay. picked up a telephone directory and I was just flipping through to look and see what services or childcare that was available. 
And I ran across an ad for spiritual counseling. Well, by that time, I knew I needed something because I felt like I was absolutely going bonkers because all of a sudden I had all these past life memories and I was having and I didn't believe in that. I was having uh, healing modalities come to me that I had never studied all types of universal information and what I consider truths were coming through and I'd never read anything about that. So, you know, what else do you think at the time? And so there was no one in my life that could really support me. And when I met this counselor, she also happened to be um, a Hopi of Hopi lineage And she told me, um, maybe it was the first couple sessions, but she ended up telling me that I was a walk-in. And that was the first time I had ever heard those words. And my, when I went to initially see her, I told her, I said, I I really think I'm losing my mind. And here's all of the things. And she would sit there. "Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm." And then she finally said, honey, I have to tell you, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. And I'm like, okay, well, that's not, number one, that's not what I expected to hear because I went in thinking I was going to get a prescription, right? And that was in that Western medicine model because I'd had all those illnesses. So I thought she was going to write me a prescription. I was going to pop a pill. All of these voices in my head and all of these images that I was seeing and all of these colors and all this information, all these crazy dreams would just go away. And it didn't happen. And so I actually started studying with her and I became one of her apprentices and I'm still one of her apprentices today. So I have been with her for 22 years. And honestly, I think she saved my life. And so from there, I was um, in Kentucky for about four more years. Then I moved to Colorado. I started my own healing practice. And it was during that healing practice building those first few years that I actually, for the first time ever, had my own space that I could just sit and go within and just allow all of those voices in my head to really start speaking to me clearly. And it was there that I began to work with my guys to understand the essence of the soul, the various layers, the templates of the soul. And when I wrote my book, Walk In, which I have a copy. Come to see it. Yep. Walk In. Show it it so we can see it. Walk In, the cosmology of the soul. And that is a gorgeous cover. Oh, my God. Thank you. I love that. I, I'm very happy with the book. Well the done. Where do we get this book? Where do we get uh, the book? Amazon. And it's also in Audible format as well as like the Kindle and ebook formats. Um, Did you read it yourself into the Audible because you have a great voice? No, I didn't. Because <laughs> okay. I was I was told that um, the, the my dialect may be hard for some people to understand. So I said, hey, that's all right with me. <laughs> So yeah, I, it's hard to read your book. To, yeah, I found someone to read it that I was so happy. She did such a phenomenal job. But it was during these times that I worked with my guides and I would really um, get so much information. And they kept telling me that I needed to write a book. Well, you know how it is. You hear it, but eh, am I am I really hearing what I think I'm hearing kind of thing? And yeah. so eventually um, they gave me the big absolutely yes, you're hearing what you're hearing through an illness so that I had to stop and sit still again and to really listen. And I was encouraged by Barbara Lamb and my friend Andrea Perrin uh, to go ahead and to move forward and to write this book because they both were aware of my story. And so I started kind of formulating it in my head. And at the time that I started writing it, I thought that all walk-ins were the same. Now, for me, I did not have a lot of close associations with people that were walk-ins. And I was really craving that community. And what I learned from my guides and from the writing of this book is the reality of it is we're all star seeds. We're all hybrids. We're all here with our own mission. Whatever that mission is, be it big, be it small, it's all the same. 
we chose to incarnate and we're here to help each other to elevate the consciousness as well as to support Gaia in her transition. And so that was first a, a big eye opener because out of everyone I interviewed, there was only one person who was like, no, I'm an earth seed. And we, we can go into more of that. Um, uh -huh. in a few minutes. But then as I started interviewing people, I discovered all of the various types of walk-ins because I thought everybody was like me. If you're a walk-in, you have a soul exchange, one soul out, one soul in. Do you remember, can I, can I interrupt you for one second? Like that experience you had, that was the soul coming in thing, and then your, your, your ET soul coming into the body. Yes. So you remember that exact. Okay. So that is one way. I will never come in. forget that. I will never forget that because I was, what I remember, my first memory is that lightning running through my body. And when I came to myself, I was sitting up in the bed, just sitting does, up. Does this soul have a different name? Yes, this is the Nawale. Nawala. Yes. So actually, we should be, it's Nawala that's on the show with us today, right? Yes. Yes. So Nawala. I'm going to start using that. I, I like Nawala. Nawala. Can you spell it for us? So for well, it's actually the, um, the way that it would be pronounced is more of a Noahela. 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 Yeah, Noahela. Noahela. And then when you look at it, it's everybody says, "Oh, Noala, Noala." And so Noah sometimes Ayla. it's easier instead of just correcting. It's like, ah, eh, whatever. You know, well, I, that name carries a vibration because when I originally um broke off i will say or when i originally became my fractalized uh, self i was working with the elohim now i was not an elohim but i was kind of like the subset of beings that was helping to create other angelic beings and so i had this job for a very very long time and the group that i worked with had its own resonance and so the name Noahela has that resonance of the initial uh, portion of my soul. And so, uh, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, that feels very sacred and I don't know if I want to use it. And other times it's like, I want to embrace that, step into my whole goddess self and woo, -hoo, you know. So I still haven't decided what I'm going to do, but that was, that was my resonance. And from there... I start, I went into various planets. Now, all of us has our origin somewhere. And some of us, actually, when we fractalize, we will go and immediately start living on a planet. Or we may go and live in between dimensions, or okay. we may go to a dimension. How do we, what's a fractalize? How do we fractalize? Okay, so my memory everything is source. Everything mm -hmm. is source energy. And when source energy made the choice to create and then become the created to see what it was like, then all of this information, all of these vibrations began to occur within source. And first was the ohm which was that resonance that began to create what I call the void. And the void is like the etheric template of source. And within that void, we have all of our creation templates. We have all of the creation blueprints and everything comes from that. And so like if you have say a um, creation template for an oversoul, it would begin to manifest differently than a creation uh, template for a universe. And so my guide showed me in my mind what it looked like in order for me to attach to this physical body. And that's where it was like, okay, here's source, here's the void, that's the etheric template. Then you have... I have my puppy on the desk. Sorry. I had. We, want to see him. <laughs> we have the creation blueprints. This is Willow. 
my little baby. Ah, oh, sweet, yeah. sweet, sweet. Is she a walk-in too? Is she a walk-in too? 5.72 pounds of pure starseed essence. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. And then um, after we have those blueprints, just like our physical body, you know, our physical bodies have the etheric body, which is the template for us, for who we are. And it also holds within it those crystalline activation codes of our soul. OK, so that's the same thing. We follow um like the blueprint or there is like a I, I think it's just a creation blueprint of how everything mm -hmm. is because you've got that etheric template and so with source what happens when you have those templates then or the blueprints within those blueprints there's multiple templates and one of those templates is for an oversoul and that oversoul template will then go to a particular universe and the only universal information that I was given was the current universe that we're in right now but I was told that kind of the laws of the other universe are very very different than what we have here very interesting so I you were about to tell us the different kinds of hybrids and I, oh, and I don't want to lose that yeah. So with the different kinds of walk-ins, when we... I meant, I meant walk-ins. Right, right. Well, I want to kind of tell you just a little bit about the progression of the oversoul. And, mm -hmm. you know, actually, I don't know if you guys... I'm just going to stick this up here. If you can see, this is a uh, template that I use in my teachings. And so like this little uh, red mark up here, I can't do that. This little red mark right here, let's say that's an oversold template. And so then you come down to this gray, which would actually then be representing an individual oversold. So that red up here comes down to the center. And so as that master oversoul expands, you have the universal oversoul, you have the cosmic oversoul, you have the planetary oversoul, you have the experiential learning oversoul, which is all the various lessons. And then you have the individual oversoul, which my guides call the Shantius Khan. And so you can see in this gray area, all those little bitty white dots those all represent fractalized expressions of that oversoul, and they all represent individual lifetimes. And so when you incarnate, let's take one of those little dots and you start to spread it out. Now, I remember being inside of my oversoul. I remember being part of the collective, and it was beautiful. It was like flashing lights there was a uh, vibration and frequency and sound. And it was like, oh, it was so soft. And it was like just this rhythmic of flow. And there was like all these little diamond sparkles. And I guess that's why I like all my bling today. But anyway, um, so you have your Shantius Khan and you gather, you can go around this gray circle and you begin to collect all the information that you need for a particular lifetime. And so maybe in a Palladian lifetime, you were a spiritual teacher. So you may come into this life as a spiritual teacher. So you bring some of those Palladian teachings with you. And so as you come down, you can see that we end up having the, how would I do this? Here we go. So you have your higher self and then that higher self comes in and it attaches oh. to the body and all of this other information is the spirit. Now, the reason I wanted to show you that is because it's really important to understand that it's very easy to be a star seed, to, to come into a different body and to have a different type of soul experiences. So for me, the walk-in was the first type of soul experience that I actually had knowledge of. And then throughout the book, I discovered that there are what's called overlays, where more 
of your energy would come in from this Shantius Khan and come down and connect in with that soul. And so that, or that soul infusion, and that soul infusion would bring a lot of different information and higher vibrational frequencies in for you. And then we have what's called like a soul overlay, which comes in and it actually would encase the soul. And it could serve as a battery jumper to, to provide more energy. It could actually be a placeholder if that soul needed to go do some healing. And it could also just be there to assist that soul during a particular time or to serve as a muse for that soul. And then we have what's called the braided soul. And that's where there's two very, very distinct souls that are occupying one physical body. And they are aware of each other and they do not connect together. They're very independent of each other. Now, with an overlay, they could actually end up becoming one independent soul or not. So the old soul could remain in the body, which I call the natal soul. So that natal soul could remain and the overlay leave. The overlay could stay and the natal soul leaves or they would blend together. But that's not the case of a braided soul. The braided soul is always very, very separate and always very, very distinct. And so imagine if you have one essence that is, say, from Pallades and you have another that's from Lyra, they may have two very different, distinct and unique ways of operating in this physical plane. And let's say maybe you have an angelic aspect that comes in and a dimensional aspect that comes in. You're going to be able to bring forward very, very different information. So will you feel so if you have all of those different beings, the Pleiadian, the Delirian, would, would that bring in? different aspects that yes. they're there at the same time. Mm -hmm. So they're going to bring you different qualities. Yes. Yeah. And the strongest quality that I brought in was that of the Arcturians. And so um, the Arcturians have actually gifted me with this beautiful healing light that comes in through the top of my head, comes down to my heart and out my hands because I do a very distinct uh, type of body work that uh, where I move muscle, bone and tissue. And when you're moving a bone, sometimes it's not the most comfortable thing. And so they gifted me this light that when it comes out, kind of serves as like an anesthesia. So it's really, really interesting. But with the other types of souls, yeah, there are like jumpers that kind of come in for a short period and leave. And then one of the most fascinating is like, Okay, I know my multidimensional aspects, but I am not aware of those individual components. But some souls have very distinct components. And at any given time, maybe the Arcturian comes forward and then it'll recede. And then the Lyran will come forward and it receives. And then the Angelic will come forward and it recedes. And so there's always this dance of energy that goes on within the body. But then there is also what I love is like the Kundalini awakenings and the spiritual mm -hmm. awakenings. Those are also very, very strong um, soul experiences. And I find that more and more people on the planet now are having individual downloads of their own higher self, not a walk in where the old soul, the natal soul leaves and the new soul comes in. The soul stays 100 percent and it's infused more with its higher self. And so many people are experiencing that. And I think that that's why we're having such spiritual awakenings across the planet. And more and more people are waking up to the fact of, hey, I'm not from here. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm from a different planet. I'm from a different dimension. I, I have an angelic family out there. And that is all so true. And we're all, you know, maybe one out of 200 people that I've talked to would consider themselves an earth seed. And an earth seed is a soul that agreed to come in and to assist Gaia, who is a pure consciousness that inhabits this planet. They agreed to assist Gaia on her earth walk. And so they've been here through all of the various densities 
So mm -hmm. they were here as, you know, molecular structures. They were here as gaseous forms. They were here as rocks. They were here as plants. And they have chosen to experience Gaia in all of the various forms that she has chosen to manifest through. And then you go ahead. So that's only one. Okay. One out of you're saying several Maybe hundred. Different, okay. More and, and more people. More mm -hmm. More, more and more people that I talk to say, I know that I am a star seed and I am from X planet and I resonate with this frequency. Then we have what's called, you know, the hybrids which again, I think we're all hybrids because there was that original hominid form on this planet that was infused with the Anunnaki DNA, which right. created the first hybrid. And then we have taken many, many forms since then, but we're always taking different forms. No, we are. We are. So, so let's go back into this. So how would you define a star seed for everyone and how, would you know your star seed? Is it because the information comes through? Like you wake up and it's like a message. Hello, Joan. We just want you to know <laughs> that you're a star seed. Right. How, seriously. Sometimes it happens that way. But the reality of it is just like a walk in, there are telltale signs with a star seed, there are telltale signs. And some of those would be that you are just very, very homesick but you don't know where home is. Another thing would be is that you have this uh, spiritual, it's like a pull to just go outside and gaze among the stars and you feel more connected at night to the stars than you do to your family in the daytime. Uh -huh. Another thing could be that you have an affinity for certain types of healing energies that would come from other planets. Or you could be that you have, um, you know, like if you've heard about the Pallades and all of a sudden you start doing all of this research about the Pallades just because you're drawn to it. Those are some physical telltale signs. And then a lot of times information comes to people in their dream time or when they do their meditations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And wow, that would be the same so with the hybrid. Strange. That would be the same with a hybrid. Now, you know, like with me, some of the telltale signs of a true walk-in is I, I had a total personality change, total personality change. And that can happen for a variety of reasons. But in my case, it was because there was this new energy inhabiting this body that had never participated in this life before, even though that was a future aspect of who I potentially could become, but in a different universe, okay, and in a different frequency. And so I had never lived this life. So when I came in, I had an immediate love for my children. Uh, I knew my husband, but I didn't have a love there. I knew my mom and dad and my sister, and of course, I had love for them. And then my friends, I was very detached. Other family members, I was very detached. Um, you know, I was very fortunate that I actually moved across the country because I could not attend family reunions or anything like that because I didn't have anything to share with those people because I didn't even remember who they were. But wow. that was one thing, the memory and the total personality change, my lifestyle change. Um, when you have all of those types of changes that occur <laughs> like that instantaneously, right for no reason, and especially that instantaneous healing, chances are you could be a walk-in. And in the book, I have like 25 or 30 questions in there that people can go through. And if they want to go to one website I didn't tell you about is the walkins.org and it's W-A-L-K-I-N-S.org. I have listed that questionnaire on that website. And that is a questionnaire specifically just for the book. And for the walk-ins, I'm guessing. Yes, okay. And just for the walk-ins, but star seeds have a lot of those same qualities. Why do you think, go ahead. I was just going to say yeah. the walk-in has to come from somewhere. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. That's so true. The walk-in came from somewhere. Right. And of course these are all the star seeds, but 
Well, I kind of have two questions, you know, like, so this person that you once were, uh -huh. that you no longer were, you like, could, could anyone, like, first of all, what a shock to your system if you were like a born again, or you were some religious experience that would not right. allow, right. I can imagine the shock, okay, yeah. first of all. I, I actually can, and I could see why you thought you were crazy. Could anyone like ask to be a walk-in? Can we go to bed tonight and at like, how do you get chosen to be a walk-in? My guides told me absolutely not that this is a birth plan pre-agreement. And so like in my case, this soul, because of the illnesses that happened in this lifetime, the soul had kind of gotten off track and had become very, very ill. And so there really wasn't an agreement between me and this other soul. But because I was in the collective energy and we received a vibrational frequency from Gaia that stated that she needed help, we came to earth and we surrounded the earth and we're still here. We're, we come to and through and through all the different dimensions and we're constantly working on upgrading the crystalline grids uh, of the planet. And so that also happens in all of the various dimensions that are taking place. So if you tweak it in one dimension, you have to tweak it in the other so that there's that vibrational continuity because as we grow and change, we then move into those different vibrational frequencies. So my guide said that my walk-in was a very unique thing, but you cannot go to bed and pray for a walk-in. What you can do is ask that more of your higher self come in, that more of your original soul essence would come in, but that original natal soul would stay. Whereas in my case, it left. It was out of here. And had I not occupied this body, the body would have died and my children would have been homeless. So she is actually gone. She's gone. There's and no did, aspect of her that remains. Did your kids know what happened to oh. you? Yes, my kids know. Everyone that knew me was dumbfounded because I was very, very sick. And then all of a sudden I have all of this life and I'm very lively and vivacious and I want to do things with my kids. Whereas before, when I would come home from work, I just wanted to collapse on the couch. I didn't want to do anything. I was lethargic. I was always grumpy because I was always in pain. And so wow. everybody, including my family, noticed everything. Wow. I want to be a walk-in too, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, or better yet, be a soul infusion and pray that more of your higher essence call oh. in that higher essence to come in and bring in more of your original self because I was yes. told that I have more of my original self, but it's not my original self. It's the self of a future self that is in a different dimension, but there was still that resonance. And so I was able to occupy the body and there was already a template. There was because the other soul was pure Arcturian that had come in. And so because of that Arcturian template, I could come in without frying the soul. And that's when the healing took place and all of, you know, the, the brain began to clear. I began to develop new neuro pathways. And otherwise, had I come in, I could have basically fried the systems. So that was one long answer to your first question. And your, your second question, the first one was, can anybody become a walk-in? Yes. And then the second one was. I don't know, even know if I can remember. <laughs> that I don't know either. I don't know either. You no, know, we, okay. So Luke is asking, what is a walk-in? So Luke, okay. yeah, a walk-in. beginning. Sure. A walk-in is a soul that agrees to trade places with another soul. And it can be at any time, at any age. And this is a pre-agreement that has taken place on some level on the other side. It is never a hostile takeover. It is never anything where someone would come in and start nudging a soul out or entice them out. It is full agreement of the natal soul. And like in my case, as I was saying, it was a total soul exchange because this soul was out of here and it was kind of a free body. 
Right. And the body was healed then to you, a higher vibration yes. to be in that. All right. We have a few other questions. Okay. Um, what is, you talked about when, when this experience happened, you were in the white space. Yes. So what exactly is the white space? Kelly wants to know that. You know, for other people, it might be different. But for me, in my case, I believe that white space was where I was still part of my collective, my overall collective. And when I incarnated, I remember coming in through the top of that roof into the body and I saw a ship that was over to my right. And when that other soul left, I can only assume that it went to the ship. Now, some people have said that it very well could be that the white space is where the soul was being prepped to come in. And that very well could be. I mean, I don't know 100% what that white space is. I know what resonates true for me. And for other people, it has actually been on ships when they talk about white space. And it's where the soul is actually extracted from one etheric being and put into another. And so, you know, for other people, it, it, it can just be anything for some people. But for me, I totally believe uh, that I was coming straight in from my collective. Um, so we have a, an interesting question here. Can souls combine? They can combine in the case of an overlay because that overlay is like the natal soul is here and the other soul comes in and attaches like a neoprene suit. And so if it is intended for those two souls to merge, they do it at that time. But that's the only type of walk-in that I have discovered that will do that because soul braids will stay independent of each other, even though there are multiple souls in the body. Soul braids. And what about twin flames? We have a question. Okay. Twin flames to my understanding and my memory is that is another part of your soul. We have both masculine and feminine aspects of the soul, and it can be that that is split. And so that twin flame is not necessarily going to be the love of your life because it's just the other you. And so, you know, it depends right. on how much work has taken place within both of you. Right. It could be a right. wonderful, it could be a wonderful union or it could be your worst nightmare, but it is actually the other half of your soul. And the activating part. Yes, I do know mm -hmm. my twin flame, but we are not together. Yeah. So. And that and that happens a lot. People think of like soulmates. Now, soulmates would be okay, so like here is just one I mean, uh, here is just like one individual aspect of you in this gray and this is when you have more of those shantius khan that are vibrating at a similar frequency that come together and they're connecting and so soul families uh, are very much the same way and then you have from the families, you'll have other families that have a like resonance. And so those come in together. And so you can have soulmates that are either from your family or from one of the collectives from the group. I love that. I love that. So let, let's sh shift the subject a little bit. How do you help people with all this information? So it's like, okay, I know I'm a walk-in. I, I, I know I'm a soul merging being here. Uh -huh. But like, what do you do with all this information and how do you personally help people? Okay. Heal, recover, and find their way. Sure. So if people are desiring to know this, I do offer independent one-on-one -on -one sessions where we can do it through Zoom. They can come here to the office, however, however that works out. And I will help them to discover the essence of their soul and what, um, if they have multiple parts of their soul, it's kind of like I can see that and feel that resonance. And so I can share that with them. I also do the crystalline grid activations, which help people not only to discover those essence, but it also helps them to become more in resonance with the light codes that they brought in so that they're more fine tuned and can, you know, like start accomplishing the mission that they came to do. 
how would I know that I needed a session like that? Like, like what goes out of balance inside of us that we need that help? Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah. Typically, I find that it's not necessarily something that's out of balance. It's a longing. You know, you're oh. being called. You really want to know because at the end of that no is kind of like a little package for you that you open up. And that could be the next step in someone's spiritual progression. I love that. It is. And, and for everyone here listening to even us today, it is that yearning, you know, that calling, mm -hmm. that yearning. And we have to know more. So in other words, we can book a session and work with you and find out mm -hmm. if we are. I would think if we're walking, we actually start to know we're walking, right? Some people never know. Some people never know. And it's not up to them to know. It's part of their path not to know. But for those individuals who it's important for them to know for whatever reason, on whatever you know level that they're working in, sometimes those things will become apparent. Now, I also do, you know, regression, the hypnotherapy with people, and it will come out in those sessions as well. So their past life yes. and, and then that mm -hmm. their experiences with interdimensional beings would come out. And can you do that on Zoom these days too? We don't have I to go can. to Colorado to see you. I actually can. Yes. Now, if someone wants the pure quantum healing hypnosis technique that mm -hmm. was developed by Dolores Cannon. I always do those in person, but with a, a different type of regression. Yes, I can do those online. Did you study with her with, with Dolores I Cannon or just have her machine? <laughs> I did not. I studied with her through all of her videos and her daughter. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, yes. I was just a little okay. too late on that. Amazing. All right. So I find this so fascinating, Sheila, you know, to, to cover all this. So, well, this is an interesting, can you help people who are sick? Sometimes. I mean, I do a lot of different healing modalities. And one of them is I work with different energetic frequencies and I have helped people I mean, if you give me a disease, I've probably helped people with it. If you give me a yeah. physical, mental, emotional, spiritual imbalance that's going on, I've probably helped someone. Now, sometimes, you know, I've even done adjustments to people's back when they were in a Starbucks in California and I'm in my office in Colorado. So, you know, it just depends on that energetic link that we have with it. each other. I and so, um, yeah, if somebody has a particular question, they can also email me at Sheila at Sheila .com If they have a particular healing question, sometimes I, and I tell people this all the time, it doesn't matter what ailment you have. If it's in your, if this is part of your plan as a learning experience, there's nothing that I or anybody can do. Right. It's part of your path. But part of the what you can part get I might play is to help open them up to understand more of their spiritual essence because they might come in here with a dislocated arm or a frozen shoulder or a sore back. But I guarantee you by the time they leave, we're talking about their soul. <laughs> I can guarantee that. <laughs> I am sure because we're back here talking about our souls. Yes. Um, okay. Well, we have a couple more minutes. I have two more questions for you. The okay. first question. So, you know, I am a chiropractor by trade. So you've mentioned adjustments several yes. times and you've mentioned the spine. And I have done some work energetically adjusting over the Internet. But I am curious what you are doing. That you, you can know, adjust from there over yeah. to Starbucks. I, you know, what I do is I connect in with the person. I look to see what's out of alignment. And I just basically talk to the energy of, say, the spine. And I'll just take my hands. And, you know, if I see it going, you know, if it's too medial, then I'll just kind of bring it back in. If there's a sublocation or if there's a bulging disc, then I very gently start coaxing it back in. And, you know, it's OK. It's safe to be in there. We need you. So I just basically talk to the body and the body responds. 
I love it. I've done some of it, but not a lot. So this is very fascinating to me. Okay, let's talk about upcoming events. Yes. And the Wish Alliance. So people know what you created. You have this weekly, every week you bring on a different speaker on hybrids and disclosure and walk-ins and Joan yes. of Angels. So tell us about your Wish Alliance and, and um, we'll put it up in the background. So we can okay. look at the Okay, wonderful. So after I wrote the book, and after I had the first conference that I did with Neil, I was contacted by so many people seeking community, wanting to know who they might be, all of these types of things, that I decided to form an organization where people could come together and they could feel safe. They could feel at home. They could drop into the essence of who they are, no matter what level that was. And everybody is welcome and everybody is accepted. And so with the Wish Alliance, what we have done is to create a platform where people can visit to obtain written information in the form of articles. They may need meditations. They may want to participate in courses. And we also have what's called an ambassadors program. And we have very highly vetted individuals such as yourself who become ambassadors. So if people are looking for information, we know if we're recommending somebody, they're getting somebody top-notch quality, the cream of the crop type of person that they can go to and they can be assured that this person knows exactly what they're doing when they talk to them. And so we also have a variety of events. Every month we have a speaker every Thursday night. And the third Thursday of each night, we have what's called, or the third Thursday of the month, we have what's called the family reunion, where people get together. And if they're new to the Wish Alliance or coming to the meetings, then they can say, hey, look, I am so-and-so and and I've had this experience. I need somebody to help me. There have been so much, there's been so much networking and so many people helped as just because attending these meetings, I mean, I just, you know, it just, it's food for my soul. And so we have wonderful, wonderful speakers every Thursday night. And actually you're going to be one of our speakers. I think, is it the 16th of September? 16th of September guys. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be so exciting to me. Yes. My tribe. And I also want you to tell them about the upcoming conference. Can you scroll it up a little bit? And I love how it says welcome home, by the way. On this. Oh, thanks. You yeah, know, because, because we're home. all family. We're all we're all here together, you know. When I've been on your conferences, it's exciting to be with like my own kind. Okay. Yes. yes. All right, our own kind. So scroll down a little bit. I think I saw the the event. Okay, now story. the events page. Oh, a little more. Oh, go to the events page, Tina. Let's there see we if go. we can if we can find it. This is Oh yeah. Okay. There so it is. Starseed conference coming up. And if you have not held your spot, please do so. Neil is working day and night and he's going to be getting this up on the website for Portal to Ascension. And if you're not familiar with Portal to Ascension, it is absolutely phenomenal. If you want to hear any speaker on any topic, you just go to Portal to Ascension and you will find it. He has created a beautiful, beautiful conscious platform. And so I'm so honored and pleased that uh, I'm able to work with him uh, and he's part of the Wish Alliance. But we've developed the Starseed Conference that's coming up. First, we did walk-ins, indigos. And we had the hybrids, and now we're doing star seeds. And you can see some of the speakers there that will be in attendance. And we have more people. Of course, we've got Joan of Angels. We have Bridget Renee Holiday, myself, Kamora Jones, who is a phenomenal artist. We have um, Marina Serene. We have Mark Brinkenhoff, Anita McKelzadek. We have Phil Gruber. Uh, Melanie Ware, we have Karuna, we have Bridget Nelson, we have so many phenomenal speakers that are going to be talking to us about being a starseed themselves and how they are presenting their message to the world. 
So I'm really excited about this, Joan, and I am so honored that you're going to be one of our speakers there as well. Well, first of all, I'm excited. Also, it's Portal to Ascension. Is it .com or .org? It's .org. Portal it is to dot .org. Dot org. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that, too, about Neil and Portal to Ascension. I, I saw you on one of those events. I don't know if it was the hybrid or the walk-in. I'm not exactly sure, but the moment I saw you, it was like, oh, my God, I have to talk to her. And I was just starting to do interviews that you were like one of the first people I actually oh, well. asked to come and interview yeah. because you. I was, it was like, oh my God, this is what I want to do. I want to bring her out, but I'm excited to be part of the conference. And I think guys, it's an important conference because mm -hmm. most of my tribe who listen to me know that they're not from here. Right. I mean, I, and I know I'm speaking for many of them. They know that they're not here. They know that they're here for a reason and a purpose. And, and I, they also know that the majority of the human race doesn't have those qualities. Right. And so it's important. And, and the other thing I discovered is, so I, I, when I speak and when I lecture, I'm always on the emotional level. It's like, how do you feel with this? How do you sit with this? I'm a, like a transformational guide in that right. way. But I was so surprised about how, how the universe is broken down scientifically and how people were able to research and actually prove yes. these interdimensional experiences that say I get. And it is quite fascinating to bring together the science, you know, the science philosophy and then the art of all of this. Right. And I'm happy about that, Sheila. That that's great. I'm looking forward to your conference. It's a play day. It, it's actually it a play week. It with is people who are not like the humans. And I say I don't even say that lightly anymore. Right. Yeah, right. because you're with like kind and and there's such a synergy and such a resonance that starts to build when you're with yeah. your own people. Very exciting. All right. So, Sheila, we just want to mention again, if people want to find out if they are a hybrid or a walk in or a starseed or get healing in an alignment in these ways, where are they going to reach you? The easiest way is just to email me at Sheila at Sheila .com. And if you want to check out my work, you can go to Sheila .com or you can go to the wish alliance.org. And if they want to show up for Thursday night, your events, can they just yes. go sign up at wish .org? Absolutely. Please go and sign up at the contact section and I will add you in this next. We have, um, Tia, who is going to be with us on Thursday, and she is a, I'm going to say a survivor of the secret space program. And she has, yes. I mean, she has memory after memory that's starting to unfold. And she has been making drawings of her memories. And so if you guys are interested in that, come on and join us. Come on home, y'all. Right. <laughs> Come on home, everyone. All right, Sheila, All right. we will see you on the other side. I'm okay. so excited. Your energy is so up. It's hard for me to believe that you're anything but this <laughs> being whose name I wrote down. Don't tell me. I want it. Noah, Noah, Ayla. Noah, Ayla. Is that the right pronunciation? Close Noah. To it. It, it's Noah. Oh, it's Noah. Noah. Oh, gosh. I sort of heard it as Noah in my head. And yes. I did. And a lot of Noah yeah. Ale. No, Noah Ela. No, no. Uh, <laughs> Noah. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Just say Noala. <laughs> That's Noala. easy. Oh, my God. Just, okay. But just, I want to. You are such a beautiful soul, Noala. Thank you. That you left the beauty of source to come down and help humanity during these times actually brings me to tears. Okay, that your soul all the way up there was like brought through to come in through this being who gave, who, who came in to give her body to you is what I hear. So she came in with this most beautiful ending to a very sad life. And that the fact that you came down here brings tears to my eyes and I really thank you and honor you. And to be on my show is then even more of an honor. So we'll see you soon, love. We'll see you Thursday night for sure. Yes. All right, guys, I hope you loved her as much as I love her. I had no idea how this would move me. And I hope that you guys feel the power of that.
because I know that I've never thought I was from Earth, and I know I'm not, and I don't think I'm a walk-in, but I did have a very big, deep personality change at one point in my life, and I'm not the same person I was. So that is something, but I feel like I'm more of a soul merge. So let us know in the comments what you think you are. And I'm so excited that you're part of my tribe, that you're here. Please, please share all this information out. Like, subscribe, share my channel so that more people get to hear the truth about who they are. And, and so they can take their own journey to ascension. I think the most amazing thing that Sheila said to me that was that this was not her way. She was not, she was not a new ager. You know, she wasn't walking around reading people and, and saying, oh, let me do a healing for you. That was not her, her way. And that she was taken in this way and given this, this new, well, she's gone, but that she came down. I have to find new terminology here that she came down to do this work. And I know many of you on here are hybrids, walk-ins and star seeds as well. So I'm just happy to meet you. Now, my work is a little different. You know that as an intuitive, I do these soul awakening sessions that do help you step into the miraculous, know who you are and why you are here. So go check that out at joanofangels.com. Check out Sheila Seppi for sure. Find out who you are and start finding out where you are from. So we are all in this ascension life together. So meanwhile, guys, thank you so much for being here with us. I look forward to seeing you all next time. Well, thanks for stepping into the miraculous with me today, and I will see you all.